Hey Dino, thank you so much for being here today. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Um, right, so Dino, um, I've known Dino, oh, actually, I've known of you for a couple of years because I saw you at the Victoria's Promise Ball when you were still part of the charity. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then, I can't, I can't remember if it was before, no, it was before that you were supposed to be my facilitate facilitator for taking me through the work that I'm now facilitating which is ultimate contribution uncovered and at the time we'd had a session and I was in a lot of pain on medication and then yes. and I couldn't remember that we'd even had a session it was really weird it was the weirdest oh, thing oh my gosh somebody just remembered that you said you saying that now I've literally only just remembered that yeah and then and yeah. then you were going to have some time away over the summer or something which meant I was going to have to wait quite a few weeks so then I got transferred to another facilitator and like you said well the universe it's obviously meant to be da 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 mm. and actually it's quite funny because because I did get transferred to Meg's um she then recommended me as a facilitator like all this time later so anyway so um meant to be. yeah meant to be so um but yeah, so Dino is um, now one of my mentors. Dino um, heads up something called Ultimate Contribution and Covered, which I became part of as of sort of last June, um, June 2020. And uh, we've been working remotely, obviously, but um, we've been on lots of calls and he's just a wonderful human being. He's so supportive. Oh. He, he's got a good sense of humor too. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, he's got a similar background to me because Dino was in sales as well. And um, so, yeah, I just thought it would be Dino's a perfect example of somebody who hasn't settled. And I thought it would be wonderful to get him on for him to share some of his life experience and perspective. So thank you again, Dino. And if you'd like to share with the listeners a little bit about you and um, and where you've come from, really, and where you are today. Oh, before That's we do that, before we do that, before we do that. Um, sorry, I forgot. I had this real impulse to pull you a card, an oracle card or a tarot card. And I've got three packs. So I've got the Romance Angels, which are oracle okay. cards. I've got the Magical Fairies, which is an oracle card. And then I've got also Fairy Tarot. Um, so it's up to you. Which one do you feel pulled? And I'll pull you a card. All right. And just... First of all, just say thank you, by the way, for that introduction and um, and those kind words. Appreciate that. And um, just to say how like how the transformation you've been through since that time that I first saw you, it's almost like barely recognisable as, <laughs> as an individual. Like I just assumed it was almost as two different people. So that's amazing. Um, but uh, and also just to say that I've never done this. I've never pulled cards out before. I've always seen it and been kind of intrigued by it, but never necessarily pulled into into an experience. So I'm looking forward to just experiencing this so thank you Mel appreciate it all right um I I've got to be honest <laughs> even though the masculine testosterone inside of me is is resisting furiously um at the the middle one the extra like the fairy one uh, but I think maybe it's to do with uh my connection with my daughter at the moment so yeah it's that middle one's just yeah that's jumping out of me so I'll yeah. go with that one please wonderful okay so um you can either ask a specific question in your own mind or out loud, or you can just say, universe, what do you need me to know? It's up to you. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll go with yeah, the last of it. Cool. All right, cool. Oh, there we go. It jumped out. I didn't even have to pull it, which I love. Can you see that? It's called Patience, Please. Patience, Please. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, cool. Um, so the card actually says, what you're asking for is coming about. Have patience as there are unseen factors that need to occur first. And I'm just gonna see if there's anything um, more in the book. Okay, so the fairies manifest desires instantly. Whatever they think about occurs immediately. So they understand why you may feel impatient when your prayers aren't answered right away. This card is reassuring you that your desires are being worked on behind the scenes. Although you may not perceive those results at present, trust things are moving in the right direction and you'll soon see and experience your desired outcome. Wow, that's cool. Do you know what's really cool about that is that um, 
quite a few of my friends have been asking me and um, very close friends have been saying like, do you know how's business? How's things going for you? You know, the questions that we all ask our, our loved ones, especially around lockdown. And most of my responses have been very much like, I feel held at the moment. I feel like I'm just trying to be patient. I'm just, so that's a real wonderful reminder and almost validation of what's been deep down in my heart, which has been like, up to this point with my career, I've always been trying and pushing and, and being impatient and being like, I want to get to the next stage. Why isn't this happening? And, or am I in the right place? And just frantically, furiously asking these kind of questions and almost demanding so much of myself in terms of progress. And this is the first time in my life that I've actually just started to really live what that card is saying. Um, and it's really interesting because that has been the most prominent thing for me at the moment. It's just like, no, you know, for once, I'm actually just going to continue just being the, the best I can be and just do the best I absolutely can. And, and, that, and just trust that things are going to fall as they, as they should and as they will. Um, and so anyway, so thank you for that. That's a really beautiful validation of that. Um, as that's not to say like, uh, here's Mr. No, or he knew that already. That's not what I mean. I just mean that's a, a beautiful validation um, that actually it's nice to be held <laughs> and, and actually just to give way to that universe and go, look, as long as I do my part, then I'm, you'll do yours and then I'll do mine. And do you know what I mean? And, and it's a beautiful like, relationship. I'm not necessarily religious or anything like that, or um, I wouldn't label anything at this point. I'm still curious. I'm probably very, I'll, I'll label myself as curious. Um, so thank you, Mel. Yeah, I mean, I can relate to that card as well, because very much like you, I've always been 100 miles an hour and, and berating myself for not being where I should be, wherever it should be is. Um, and I've had to be very patient as well over the last few months. So um, I think that card was probably for both of us. So Yes, I was thinking that as I was speaking. You know. <laughs> do, you, do you think, Mel, it's part of our sales background, this corporate sales, like quarterly quarterly and then it went to monthly by the time I left it was then monthly yeah, it's always been monthly for me yeah no way yeah. so there you go so it's a monthly impatience like you must create numbers out of yeah. thin air out of thin air every month on the from the first of the month you're on zero again it's yes. so soul destroying yeah <laughs> yeah they've got to find a better way to motivate I really do that is just yeah. it's, that is soul destroying or it takes a certain individual to be able to do that um or to be motivated by that okay well Shall I answer? Shall I yes, go into yes. answering your question then? Yes. Um, and so, just a hello to everyone, um, to those who are listening, and I hope that um, that you find some value or truth. You know, me sharing my own story will find some uh, truth in your own heart, and then that will help you in some way. Um, so, with that said, I uh, taking it back to the beginning, in the sense that of a feeling, I've always had a feeling that I want to do a lot and be as big as I can be as a person, you know, as I want to expand and, and have as much impact as possible. I've always felt very grateful for the upbringing that I've had. I grew up in basically Surrey. I just haven't been able to leave it, um, just hit the corners of, of Surrey. But I was born in South Africa and my parents um, came over to this country. They were actually Greek, um, but they moved to South Africa, got a university degree and then came over to England, but they had nothing and no money, literally zero cash, no job. Um, and they built themselves up to be, um, my dad was a senior project manager and my mum also had a very um, senior role in Oracle. And they did so well for themselves. And it was very inspiring for me to see zero to, to such growth in my ex <laughs> during my experience of being a child. And during that time being so well cared for and, and attended to, um, that I just always felt so grateful that I wanted to pay it back. This is always what I've, it's always been in my heart. It's been, like, I just want to give this back. Like I, I feel too lucky here to keep this all to myself. I really want to help others. Um, yeah. Just get back in some way. Now, my dream as a kid was always um, to be a rock star in some way. Um, Mine too. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. And I, and I thought well, I'll give back through, through entertaining. Right? And I used to jump around and leap around on stage for, for most of my teens and had some fun with that and toured um, certain areas of the UK and stuff, just having good fun with that. But, but then my real heart was saying, I want to give back from a charity perspective. So my my mind Mel, it was always, I'm going to earn so much money that then I can give loads of it back. Yeah. And I wonder if people can resonate with that. It sounds like you can as well. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah I think that's maybe a relatively common 
um, uh, ambition. So I went along that journey um, and I came out of uni pretty well, I was coming towards the end of my uni degree now, like feeling pretty like well puffed out, you know, as in like my chest was puffed out, felt very confident um, about um, my intentions, like, because it was always benevolent. I was like, I, I know what I'm here to do. I put my rock star career to one side. I'm just going to focus on business and growing wealth. Um, and that was a big shift for me, but I was happy to make that shift. And then, I mean, I'd just been traveling, I think. Um, I was in the middle of traveling Europe at that time, just like my gap year, uh, very atypical. And I was with my best friend in the world and we were in Prague and I received a call from my brother and he said, um, and we just walked past like a monk who was just like, we're having these conversations and it felt very esoterical and existential and very just like beautiful, wonderful. I was like, God, man, could life just get more perfect? And, uh, and I had this business plan. I was going to come back and talk to my parents about, about starting my own business and property. And like, I was just like, I, this is it. This is the, my, the world's my oyster. And I really feel like I know where I'm going. Um, anyway, so I received this call from my brother and I'd say it's probably one of the most important calls of my life. And he said, um, Dino, mum has been, has just been having some tests and she's been diagnosed with motor neurons disease. Um, and I don't know if anyone knows that, but it's, um, I mean, it brings emotion just talking about it now, but it's, it's just a bit of a nightmare illness really, because it's, for my mum, it was so drawn out for others. It's quite quick, but actually that's part of the devastation of it is that you don't know you're in the unknown. You don't know how long it's going to be. You don't know what the journey is going to look like. You know, nothing about it. Um, all you know is that this person is now going to lose all the feeling and control over their motor neurons. Um, and the things that control our, our, our muscles and movement. Uh, and to the point that then, they'll have respiratory failure because of course they just, their, their organs just can't compete and, 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 uh, and the person will, will pass. So that's all you know. It could take six months, could take 10 years. And then Stephen Hawking still seems to claim that he's got ALS and, and that's, that's also thrown some confusion into the mix. Like, could you last 70 years? So as you can imagine, chaos. So it's just complete, like, thought I was having the best time of my life. And then suddenly now the, the person that is closest to me in the world at that time, and, and don't get me wrong, like that changes as you grow up, maybe when you're a little bit older, um, you know, your partner becomes your closest person. I would say Haley, my wife now is, is definitely the closest person in the world to me. But at that time, it was, I was still a mummy's boy, right? Like I still, in, in, a, in a good sense, right? Like I was still independent. <laughs> I didn't call her mummy either. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um, I just had such a, I, I loved my relationship with my mum. put it that way. Uh, and I was super close and shared everything with her. So to think that that would end was through my life into chaos. But the main thing, Mel, that threw into chaos was, or one of the main things, so many things, but for the context of this conversation and what might help others is that my plan had been completely blown into smithereens. There was no way in my heart could I, after everything my parents had done for me, to then say, oh yeah, guys, while you're dealing with this complete chaos and while we have to care for mum, like, She's going to start to slowly deteriorate to the point where she can't even feed herself or scratch an itch. And it's like, I'm going to now put all this pressure on you to live at home and, and suck on the teeth of my parents, you know, and, and financially and mostly financially. I just couldn't do that. So I chose a different path. I thought, OK, well, I need to I need to I figure out a new plan. And this is where it all went a bit wrong Mel, for me, I think. Um, I went from being a super confident guy to being a, just a, an anxious mess. So what happened is I, um, I applied to join IBM because that's what I knew. I did it in my um, sandwich year as part of my degree. So that's what I knew. So I, I applied back to IBM. And as I did that, I did get the job and I started off as a, I thought, I just want to be out there helping customers. And, and that was the consultancy dream, right? Like you're going to go out there and solve customers' problems. Um, but that didn't that didn't work and it didn't quite turn out as impactful as I wanted it to be. It didn't feel aligned, something wasn't quite right. Um, and then I shifted into, this guy said to me, almost like the devil, right? <laughs> Just like with his fingers going, come this way. If you want lots of money and if you want lots of um, success, then this is where you've got to go. You've got to be in finance. I was like, okay, cool. And then you've also got to be in sales. Like if you mix finance and sales together, that's where you're going to make the most money and, and, and the most progress in your career. Um, and I was a pretty ambitious guy still then, you know, that didn't change. 
that's the thing well like nothing as you know during chaos the, the deep core of you doesn't really change and that, well, that part of me was progress i wanted to move forward i wanted to be ambitious so so this guy goes come over here and i go oh okay and i jumped i jumped into the trap um <laughs> and um and i was just very ambitious so i climbed the ranks through being in sales and account managing and finance and then got to the point where i'm uh relatively you know early in terms of my um, ambitions as well as about 26 27 where um i was running the european practice for a smaller company so someone had hunted me from ibm and said i want you we want you to run our european practice for this particular software um can you go out there and build the Euro european practice and that was fun to an extent right i got to travel um and i got lots of responsibility i had some people to manage i had like the money side was was beyond ridiculous for my age into for my perspective i'm sure people were earning way more like millions and stuff but for me six figures at like 26 27 was pretty pretty massive um and certainly for, for my family too so when i turned around and said to my family like i'm unhappy i am i feel like this is chipping away at my soul every single day um, of course, people were like, yeah, but look, it's because of what's happening with your mum, right? Like your mum's literally dis dissolving as a human being in front of you and withering away, um, which is a horrible thing to see. Um, so maybe it's that. And, and I was like, yeah, like <laughs> probably is that, right? It's not. But it wasn't just that. Like, Mel, I was getting to the point where I was th physically throwing up in the mornings before going to work. Like I was so anxious. Um, and the stress and the responsibility. And then I was looking ahead and I was like, okay, mum, mum then eventually passed away uh, after five years with motor neurons disease. And I've got to say, we had some amazing moments during that time, like some beautiful, blessed moments. In fact, just yesterday, I was, um, some videos came up on my phone and I was looking through some surprises that we did for her. And when you know the end is nearer than perhaps you're expecting, your perspective does shift yeah. and certainly then the times that you create with them are very special very very special so i'm thankful that we got that time i really am um so mum passed away and and for me the the impetus to want alignment came back into fold so now i'm like right i had this vision as a kid right to earn lots of money and give back i had the business plan that i was going to do that with that got thrown out the, the mix then i joined this corporate career and I was like, I'm making the money that I want to be making, but there's no way that I can survive here. There's no way my body and me can survive here. And I'm looking ahead. My mum's passed away now. Now I'm looking ahead going, life is way, way, way too short. And, and it just gives you a bit of perspective, obviously, when you have that kind of loss. And I was like, I know I don't want to be here anymore. I can see the road ahead. And I don't want to be that person. I know I have to be a bit more like, not slimy, that's, that's not the right word, but it i just have to i have to i felt i had to be a bit more manipulative in the sense that i couldn't be truly me and truly authentic i hadn't found a way to be truly me and authentically what i believed in and my values in 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 that role so i was kind of wearing a mask i was being one person at work and then i was being one person at home and then i was just putting on these different masks um and so that just i knew that wasn't sustainable as a, as a as a future that well at least that's the aha moment for me i was like yeah. i can't i cannot do this anymore it's a bit like what you're i love the title of your podcast like never settle um because that was probably the biggest moment of like you're not doing this anymore you're not selling anymore uh, stop it this is not going to work and all you're going to do is just maybe you're just going up throwing up more times in the day like where are you going to go with it like where are you going to go where's this going um, and certainly the path that I saw ahead wasn't where I wanted to go. So. How old were you at this time? Yeah. Good question. Yes. Yeah, so I was 27, 28. Mm. Um, so, so then I met a human being called Alex Eastman. Um, through uh, actually my girlfriend's friend. Um, so it was a very sort of organic meet. And um <laughs> damn it that guy has just full-on shifted my life of 180 um and i'm sure maybe people could relate to just meeting one or two people that just shift a lot for them uh, and that was alex for me what he did is 
he opened up the possibility of knowing yourself at a level where you can always find direction through whatever chaos comes your way. And I think for me, as someone who spent my whole life going, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Is it this? Is it that? And then bouncing around, as you know, that, as I was saying, they're bouncing around from different jobs within the corporate sector and going, I just can't seem to find my place. For him to suggest that there was some way of doing some kind of self-exploration where you could find your place by knowing yourself better it was something that really interested me and piqued my interest. So so we went through this whole process of uncovering um, my core values, uncovering my vision, uncovering my mission in life, which then changed everything, right? Because it was like chaos. I have no idea where the hell to go. I have no idea where to turn. I don't know who I am really anymore. I've been in corporate career for 10 years. I feel like the shell of the man that I was when I was 21. And I was just like, you know, in like I was saying in Prague, meeting me talking to these Buddhist monks and just having such a like fun time with my like with life <laughs> generally. And now I'm just like the shell of a person and I like, almost barely recognize. And then re-engaging with that core, finding that person, finding that that individual just the second before I received that phone call and how everything else changed after that. To re-engage with that individual has been the turning point for me. That I can start to say things like I said at the beginning of this call, which is I feel held, or I just feel like I just need to continue to be me and I can be patient. Um, so from that point on, I but does that make sense so far? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I, I mean, me personally, um, I, I just can relate to every single thing you've said every single thing you said great yeah good I'm, I'm hoping that others can too so so then the shift right now you're like okay well then what happened so so once i found this out i started to think about my career was the main thing for me mel at this time was just like career 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 i want to get on the right path so that i can fulfill this dream of, of giving back and then i was like why wait why do i have to wait till i'm like stinking rich, just like almost like that. I don't know if you anyone will resonate with this. You know that Richie Ritual, I think it's called Rich Guy, where he gets that blank check in the film and then he's just like, he's got an abundance of money or just like this, this, why am I waiting to sit on a castle of coins to, to give back? And that was a big shift in my thinking. Um, and that's what the Uncovering My Values, Vision and Mission helped me do. It's like, I can do this now. I can impact people right now. I don't need to wait to be uh, full of riches. So the opportunity came up to be general manager of a cancer charity um, called Victoria's Promise, which you mentioned there, and, and to build that relatively small local charity into a nationwide charity. That's kind of the aim. Um, and my job was to just try and kick off that momentum. And yeah, it was a massively more aligned role than corporate sales for me and i'm not saying that's for everyone but for me being having that leadership role but having the experience of dipping into all those different areas of the business you know marketing services speaking to mps speaking to hospitals to then speaking to these women who are who are tra transgressing or, or like just moving through cancer um, and then the, the husbands, like it was such a powerful, meaningful, everything I felt I was doing was moving to me, moving me towards my vision, right? Which was, you know, to solve the root causes of our most prolific challenges. That's part of my mission. And this is obviously a prolific challenge right now, which is cancer. Um, and as I was doing, sorry, go for it. Oh, no, I was just going to say, and also you took a massive pay cut to do that, didn't you? So you, a minute ago, yes. you were talking about sitting on a pile of, you know, a castle of coins or a pile of riches. And talk about the complete opposite of that where you actually took a massive paper and thought I'm doing it anyway yeah that's such a good point yeah I hadn't thought about that but that was a big shift yeah and you know what's interesting is that it didn't feel um like such a big deal and that's really interesting to reflect on even now as you say that it wasn't that big a deal for me I didn't bear in mind my whole vision like my whole previous vision was make lots of money yeah. So then suddenly go, you know, to be presented with a half my salary was like, I guess was less impactful than I thought it might be. 
And I think it's because, Mel, that I had a burning desire to live a more meaningful, fulfilling life and realizing mm, maybe the money bit isn't necessarily the biggest part of that. Yeah. I just need enough to survive. And that's what that salary was. That negotiation salary, like salary negotiation, sorry, was, was more about what can I survive on and can you guys afford it? And so that was kind of the conversation we had. So yeah, it was a big shift. And then it was like, I started to open my eyes to all opportunities that would allow me to bring my vision and values into, into alignment. And that's a very different paradigm that I was having. It was very different. It was more about, I've set the goal. I've set the target and the game that I want to play for the rest of my life. Um, and I finally found confidence in that. I think that was the hardest thing for me, my whole twenties and teens, to be honest, was having any confidence in my ability to decide what my future is going to look like or to decide the direction of my path. Yeah. I just had no confidence in it. Or I'd have like momentary confidence. And I think maybe people could relate to that too. It's like, no, this is definitely where I want to go. And then you take two steps in there, you're going, shit, this is where I want to go. <laughs> and you come back and you go, hey, let me get, let, let's try this other path. Ah, shit, it's not the right path. Um, and then you get to the point where you get a bit disillusioned and you lose trust in your own ability to actually set a path. Yeah. Um, and you lose that trust. So for me to re-engage with that confidence was massive. So, so I started this journey around being a GM. Uh, but at the same time, as I'm saying there, I looked for other opportunities and other opportunities were coming my way. And that was this, this coaching, right? This is coaching in uncovering these, these, this kind of fundamentals, if you like, of our character, which is our values, vision, and mission, uh, and our skills too. And, um, <laughs> wow. Like talk about like when you just have an opportunity come up and you just feel like, yeah, pull towards it. For those who are not, who are only listening on audio, I did a ridiculous, um, <laughs> impression of being sucked into almost like a ghostbuster um suction machine but it does feel a bit like, <laughs> I enjoy does feel a bit like that <laughs> thank you good i'm glad um so i think the point here is that i i let go of i think one of the biggest things for me mel is that i let go of the money side being the pure target and remembering what the feeling is that i'm trying to to actually achieve which is the feeling of impact of giving back of helping others um but i had no other clarity on that so having some confidence and clarity in who i was and where i was heading enabled me to give me that confidence in decision making for various opportunities so not only was it decision making of what opportunities were coming my way but I, it seemed to open up the opportunity i seemed to see more i seemed to just see more opportunities out there and then be able to analyze them better and so I did start the coaching space. I just felt like, wow, this is, this is aligning everything. My skills, my values, my vision. It's just even more alignment than the general manager role. Um, and I took the very painful and heavy-hearted decision to step away as general manager for um, Victoria's Promise, but stay as, a, as, as an active ambassador. So I still do talks. I still go to schools and do talks. Or um, I'm still at events, um, fundraising events and stuff like that. So I'm never going to leave that space because I truly believe in that vision. But ultimately, I have to be true to where I'm most aligned. And so I carried on that path and I developed. I carried, I just threw myself in. I was like, okay, let's throw myself into this space. I feel so pulled. It feels so aligned. Let me do the work. So um, I studied a bit at Cambridge. I did uh, another couple of days at Oxford, actually. I just wanted to go to the best institu institutions and learn about coaching, executive coaching, um, psychology. Um, I'm in the middle of my psychology master's now. And, like, and then I was like, I need to develop this framework that served me in a way that I can actually help others transcend the same chaos that I did and was able to as a result of creating this framework and it's a framework to do what I said there and what it did for me which is to uncover confidence in who you are and ultimately then confidence in what direction you want to go in but actual ultimate confidence in who you are where you want to go at the highest level so then you can understand and, and um, analyze and make decisions about opportunities that are coming your way whether that's career opportunities relationships um, friendships um, you have a way, uh, a reference card, if you like, to to look 
at when making decisions. Um, and so, yeah, so then I, I did the work, I developed this framework and uh, we've labeled it Ultimate Contribution Uncovered, UCU. Um, and then the next step was just to grow that. Um, and all I've been doing, Mel, is just thinking about how do I impact people and add value to people and do so through the paradigm of my values and vision and mission and everything else just seems to be falling in place like i don't know where the money's come coming from in, in so long time right like it's just but it just seems to just come and the the people just seem to be joining we've grown from like just me <laughs> um to like 70 of us like in such a short in, in a matter of months um and that's just continuing to grow and so, so it's just, right with that yeah okay i did wonder well, across the team yeah, yeah, I know it's across the team. I did wonder how many there were involved now. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's about 70, 75, and I think it's growing now. I think we're probably actually near at 80 now with a few new members that have just come in actually in the last couple of weeks. Um, but certainly within UCU, as you know, it's about 45, 55. I think it's about 55 now. So, so it's just, just continuing to grow, right? And it's just so grassroots. We've helped, I mean, you know that, we've helped hundreds of people through this it's just this new label that we've called it ucu but i mean we've impacted hundreds of people in the last five six years with this same methodology i've just been tweaking and developing it and adding to it based on the the research that i've been doing out in the field uh, and with these institutions um and now we just labeled it and not even a year later we're you know i, I don't want to like start saying numbers to because i don't want people to think i'm bragging but the point is that i just feel like i'm where i should be and I'm now starting to tap into the 20 year old me before that phone call. And now I'm finally feeling that confidence in myself and who I am and who I was born to be and impact the world through for the first time in, in, that, in that long. Um, and it's down to not just uncovering this stuff, Mel. It's not just about uncovering it. It's about actually then building your life around it. Um, and so, yeah, I just want to be an example for the work. And, and that's also gives me some, <laughs> yeah. some peace. So, so anyway, that's a long, long answer to your question, but I hope there's some, some value in the re relativity there for other people, but yeah. Yeah. Huge, huge, huge value. And um, <clears throat> I mean, obviously I've been through the process myself and I'm now going to be a facilitator for this. And I think when I started like my, when I, I didn't know I was going to be doing this work when I joined what I joined because I joined um, an online education platform to uh, basically increase my skills and be able to start um, producing my own income without having to rely on the man, the boss, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that we were going to go through the process that we went through, which was called something different, as, as Dino has said. It took me a while to complete mine for whatever reason. I let life get in the way and everything. Um, but when I first, because there's another part to this as well, there's also um, something called Pinpoint Your Purpose, which was the which was a starting point for me. And uh, no, it wasn't. It was core values and and but then Pinpoint Your Purpose. And when when I read that, when I saw that, I actually cried because I was like, fucking hell, that's me. And it took somebody else to, to tease that out of me, if you like, for want of a better phrase. Because I, I'm, as a person, everyone thinks I'm misconfident now. Well, that's bollocks, really. It's absolute bollocks. And, and I'm the worst self-promoter going. <laughs> so I would never have put those words down because I would have seen it as arrogant or... How can I say that about myself or, you know, and, and all these other stupid things that go on in our minds. Um, but for me, it took a while. I think because I've had, because I've been, I feel like I've been on two trajectories my whole life. There's the, the must do and ha has to do to save everyone. And then there's the, the the the, the, spirit, the little spiritual mal that's been burst trying to get out all my life really it's always been there I've always been a bit weird and a bit different but um it never it never I never allowed it out you know yeah. for, for a long long time and so yeah I've kind of lost what my thread was with that but I, I think the point is and I know what I was saying 
So for me, I think the 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 wall was thicker than maybe for some people in terms of allowing myself to break through it. And, and I wanted to do all these things, but then the other side of me was like, no, but now you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to do that. And, mm-hmm. and so therefore it probably took me longer to, to get through that than, than other people. But once I actually got to the point where I was like, oh, wow, this is me. And I actually started to embrace it. And I actually started to look at those core values and think, you know, that is, that is me and that is not what I'm doing. I, I'm continuing to put myself through the pain of not being aligned with a massive corporate organization that doesn't give a shit about anyone except its profits, really, if I'm being brutally honest. And why? I mean, I never threw up in the morning. Um, I know people that have got to that point with their jobs, my, my current partner included. Um, so, um, but I was never happy. I was never springing out of bed. I was never, I was never fully committed. And you were saying earlier about, um, wearing the two masks, you know, you were a certain person, but you realized in that sales environment, you should be a little bit more manipulative. You should be probably a little bit more aggressive. And Mm. that was, and and I'm exactly the same. and, And I just couldn't do that. I was too honest. I was too, and I, I, I couldn't, you know, there was lots of people around me that, yeah, but if you just did, yeah, if I just did that, but I, that wouldn't sit right with me, you know? And yes. Um, yeah. So yeah, so it, it's funny, isn't it? And we all do that. We all do that um, to a certain level. Yeah. And I actually just want to touch on that thing there where you said I would have to maybe be a bit more aggressive or something. If ultimately, and you're saying that, why don't you just do that? Why don't you just that? And it's so true. Basically, it's, it's the game. I didn't want to play that game. It's these, all these games that were being played at that high level. And it became very political. And I get that. And I get that you have to say things to one particular person and say another thing to another particular person. And then eventually you create some kind of alliances. And then ultimately, it's just about alliances rather than value of product. Um, and, and then it was like, mm, I'm just not sure I really want to play the golf game. You know, the uh, where all the business is done on the golf course. I, I'm okay with that if if what we're doing is feels meaningful and we're moving the right way, but it's not the game I want to play. Mm. And I think that's a really, um, and I don't know if um, you've spoken about this analogy before, Mel, on any of your podcasts, but certainly what I was saying in my uh, bit before around where I come from and, and where I'm at now to answer that question, I was always playing a game that I wasn't necessarily wanting to play, whether mm. that's corporate, um, in, sometimes in relationships but I'd never had confidence it's all right saying that but then I never had confidence about what game I wanted to play mm. so when I was at that transition point where I was like I know I don't want to be here but I have no idea where I want to be or I have like a such a vague idea it's like a tiny little candle at the corner of the room that looks like it's going to blow out if I move any like if I move slightly closer towards it, it's going to blow out yeah. so it's like it's I just don't have that confidence and knowing and understanding and clarity about where I want to move to next so therefore I stay trapped in where I am because at least it's what I know um, and also I don't really I want to be bloody sure I don't want to move again without being really sure about the next move and I think a lot of people can resonate with that so it's about creating what's powerful for me is about creating my own game and going and the vision is like what does the game look like if I won like if I won the game what does it actually look like and the values are about well what are the rules of the game and the mission is like how I'm going to play it. And I think having that understanding or having that as an analogy for you can help at least know where to start, which is why I need to at least determine the rules of my game. And then I need to determine what it actually looks like to win the game. What am I aiming towards? Um, and then, then have a think about how I'm going to play it. And I think if someone had said that to me earlier on, I would have found that clarity earlier on, but I'm quite glad that I found it relatively early anyway. Um, or anyway, what is early, what's not, but I'm glad I found it when I did. And that's what Al really gave me was that construct to create my own game where I didn't need to play this other game in corporate. Or if I was in a corporate job, could I create my own game within their game that I still wanted to play? Mm. So it wasn't, this work isn't all about leave corporate um, or like, it's, it's, it's just about finding, uncovering what the game you wanna play is 
Mm. and making sure that you're in an environment with your life and that includes relationships, home, works, that you can play your game as full out as you want to play it. Um, and with as much fun and joy and humor and levity, but also meaning as possible. So that's the one thing I want to say, really important. The other thing was that we've both been talking about values and, uh, and vision and like who I am, knowing who I am. And, and maybe those concepts are a bit either o overused or diluted or misunderstood or uh, I guess just used by so many people. What do we mean? And so just want to be super clear. I hope that analogy helps in terms of to, to understand what values are. But to be really clear, values are the things that determine our behavior, whether we know it or not. It's guiding our behavior. Um, and sometimes our values deep, deep down, because there's a bit of a hierarchy, but deep down at the core of our being, what we value most sometimes is being lost or masked by external influences. And then we start to act out of integrity with those values that we, we actually have deep down. And those values are, what are our deal breakers? What, what, what are the standards of our behavior? What are the rules of the game? What are the rules that we want to live our life by? What do we think is so important? that if anyone steps on them, it's game over, literally game over. Um, what's powerful to have in play and what's painful to not have in play. And yeah, so that's kind of what we mean <laughs> by values. Um, and when we say get to know who you are, it's to get to know those core values, to get to, to, to peel off the layers of the onion that may have been like formed through external influences, through parents, what they say you should do, what loved ones say you should do, what friends say you should do, what society tells you to do, rip that all off and just remember who you, what you think you should do um, and get that clarity and understanding if that's what I mean by who you are is, is what you most value in the world, but deep, deep down, all the way down to the core um, and then setting some kind of a vision with that is, is very powerful to do because uh, it gives you some kind of directionality because it's all good to know who you are but it's nice to have a, a vehicle to bring that uh, into alignment and, and fully manifest that so i hope that helps in terms of just explaining some of those concepts yeah um and actually it was on just what you were saying about being out of integrity with some of your core values um this came up on the previous podcast i did with megs actually which was specifically mm -hmm. around the work that we do and um I had an aha moment in that podcast, which was, oh, yeah, it was, um, and it was a great reminder. And it was basically, so like my main, if I, if I thought about my 10 core values, that my top two would be honesty and authenticity. Um, and with everything that's going on in the world right now, I feel so frustrated, angry, that we're not in my belief, in my opinion, we're not being given the honesty from the powers that be, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is driving my frustrations and this is, and they're not certainly not being authentic. This is driving my frustrations and my anger, which has been coming out in conversations with people around me that I love. And, and I get frustrated that they cannot see the lack of honesty and authenticity that's being delivered to us. And, Therefore, we've ended up in quite heated discussions and mm -hmm. certainly me and my son and me and my partner. And I, anyway, when I was having this conversation with Megs the other day, she started to talk about the lack of integrity with some of our core values when other core values trump them. And then I realized because another one of my core values is respect and it's actually written in my purpose statement. It's in my, I think it's in my mission. And I thought, oh my God, I'm not being respectful to those people and their opinions because I'm allowing my, you know, honesty and authenticity because I'm, I'm screaming against it. I'm allowing that to, to roughshod over being respectful to, to those individuals. And, and I've done this work and I'm now a facilitator. So like Meg said, you know, we ain't perfect. It's going to happen all the time. But the, but the fact that you're aware of what your core values are and you can continue to have these, especially if you keep looking at them every day and sort of remembering what it's all about, and, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you can quickly bring yourself back into a place of alignment and a place of being there for others rather than I'm right and you're wrong. Yes. Yeah. And it's about getting the best out of you, isn't it? Like you say yeah. there, that, 
just thinking about that one value wasn't getting the best out of you. You weren't getting the best out of you and therefore your partner and your son weren't getting the best version of you either. And people talk about, I want to live my best life and live the best version of me. Well, what is that? And what you know is that it's when your 10 core values are in alignment. When, or at least a, a, a strong selection of those 10 values are in alignment. Yeah, that, that's and, and that's a really good point um, to make. Just having one value or three values, even and going, I'm just going to live my life along three values. It's not wide enough. It's not. Yeah, because freedom's another one, and obviously none of us have got perceived freedom right, right. now, have we? Because we can't get on the plane. Well, we could if we wanted lots of tests and jabs, um, <laughs> and all of that sort of thing. So it's the perceived freedom. So yeah, so I think all of that has been driving me crazy let's be honest <laughs> yes in right. your what looks like driver's seat right now um, <laughs> i would say that i would say though that let's look at that freedom quickly and let's look at the power of, of looking at that so you don't have freedom at, at the moment in terms of as as you may have had it before in terms of geographical movement but what you do have and will always have is a freedom of how you respond in every moment as you know and so you can still apply that freedom to, to different areas of your ex- existence and experience and that's also the power because that freedom is multi-dimensional it doesn't just mean geographical freedom like for you it means actually i just want freedom of thought so just being in like a space of meditation or just being space of just nothing and just giving your space to mind space to, to think um creating that feeling of freedom is what that value is trying to say to you um and you can create that now in this moment right now with me the freedom to to nod or to say yes or to raise your hands up in the air or to do stupid things that i like my stupid sucking into the ghostbuster thing whatever you've got freedom to respond and freedom to think about it so it's um yeah it's, it's also powerful to navigate when you're not feeling an alignment in other dimensions or dynamics of that value Does that yeah. makes sense yeah 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 absolutely <laughs> Um, Okay, well, I think as we sort of draw to a close, um, I always like to finish these interviews with some pearls of wisdom from whoever is sitting in the chair. And um, with the perspective of somebody sat listening to this now and and they're feeling trapped in whatever that might be for them, whether it's relationship, career or whatever, what do you think would be a good starting place for somebody that's feeling that way and maybe doesn't know what to do next yeah it's a really good question there's different ways i could go with this but i think i'm just going to really feed into where they are so if i if i'm feeling really stuck i'm feeling like i'm in a rut maybe where i was feeling um at one point of that journey that i spoke through which is this idea of i know i want to get out of where i am now but I don't necessarily know, as you say, where to start, where to move forward next. Well, I hope that part of this conversation is, is already helped with that um, yeah. in terms of, at least for me, what really worked was looking inward. So what I was doing at that time and what's easy to do when you're drowning is to, is to, to reach out to reach out, to reach out. There's got to be some answer somewhere else. There's got to be some answer. It's in a book. It's even in a podcast. It's even a a YouTube video. It's it's, it's out there. But what I'd suggest is, although this is slightly um, um, ironic because I'm now going to give you advice of what to do on a podcast, but (laughs) the, the, what I would say is the main focus at least should actually be inward and looking for answers inward. Um, And if at least you are going out, you're, you're doing it so not to necessarily find the answers, but to help you navigate that inward um, uh, investigation. And when you are navigating that inward investig- investigation, it feels a bit like a stepping into, you know, into New York City without a map. It's just, it's, it feels very difficult to orientate sometimes and it can feel hectic or busy or completely empty, depending on what, what, what your mind's like, what your heart's like, it might just feel like a desert. Um, but ultimately, I'd say the next step is, is to do that in an investigation, but with some kind of assistance, with some kind of guidance, with some kind of map. And I would suggest trying to at least start with what is it, what is it that's always motivated me, that's always driven me at my core, what's always 
made me react negatively or react really positively. Um, and then try to set the parameters for your game. So understand what the rules of your game are based on that inner investigation. Then go set out what the game's going to look like to win and then go figure out how you want to play it. But I would just suggest release. I invite you to stop thinking about other people's games, anyone's games. I mean, literally the person next to you as you're thinking about it or in your household. So don't think about anyone's game. Just clear the slate um, and start building from scratch because it's not from scratch because your, your, your body and your heart will have something in there. Um, but just feel clear, clear your space, clear your workspace. Um, and then start to build the parameters for your game. And I would really encourage you, otherwise I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now, Mel. Um, and I'd be out of integrity of what I'm doing right now to not suggest that having someone like you, Mel, guide them through the creation and crafting and uncovering of their core values, their vision and mission, the parameters of their game so that they can be excited again about the game that they're playing because it's theirs. And not only is it theirs, it will serve others, it will, but it will also get the best out of them. And it will include all of their skills. It will, it will align all their skills, it will align all their values. And they can start building a life around their game and what they were born to do, what their true calling is. And that's not an easy investigation to go down. So I would either encourage them to come to you to get that guidance or to whatever it is, find a way to uncover those core values in a way that's true and meaningful um, and find that vision, find that mission and find out what you're good at and uncover that in a way that enables you to play the game that you want to play. Um, but do it properly. Do it properly. Don't cheap out. Do it properly because this is the root of everything. It's literally the root of everything you do going forward. I, I would just wish everyone did this at like 18, 19, 20, right? Yeah. It's the root of everything. Um, it's the root of all your decisions. Let it come from a place of truth. And in order to find out that truth, don't, don't cut corners. Go for the most, the, the organization or the person, if it's Mel, if it's us, whatever, but go to an organization that you know are shit hot at this and, and that have done the work and know that there's value. There's a lot of value and importance in doing this work right and doing it thoroughly and diligently and not just giving you a list of values and going pick which one resonates with you um but actually going deep into the process of uncovering them um because you build those foundations on sand the rest of your building is, is not likely to survive chaos build it with proper stone foundations and you'll be able to navigate that any chaos that comes your way so i just suggest build the par parameters of your game and do so don't cut corners just yeah. do it properly because it's the best investment you'll make, I think, or one of the best investments you can make. Sorry. Oh, that's no, a, no, that's, that's a long answer. That, that's lovely. That's perfect. Um, thank you, Dino. And uh, yeah, thank you again for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure to have this hour with you, um, even though you've cancelled on me twice. <laughs> yes, I did. I did reschedule twice. <laughs> terrible human being. You terrible said I was a wonderful human being. I'm terrible. Uh, Bless you, you're Thank so you busy, um, and I know how busy you've been, um, but you, you're you're an absolute inspiration to me, so thank you so much, and I know you're going to be an inspiration to others um, that are listening to this, so thank you very much. Thank you so oh, much for having me. I tell you, I've, I've forgotten to blimmin ask, sorry, and I was just thinking, yeah. oh, in my mind, if anybody wants to find you, Dino, where could they find you hanging out if they wanted to know more about you? Oh gosh, okay, um, I'll just go to my website and just see what uh, resonates with you so it's dina rakitsis.com so that's d-i-n-o and then my surname which is r-a-k-i-t z-i-s.com um but ultimate contribution i'm that's my that's me now right is ultimate contribution that's my that's my baby that's that's what i'm dedicated to that's my life's work so yeah. the work you're doing mel as well they'll find me too <laughs> yeah okay cool well thank you again and i'll put, obviously put that in the show notes because he's got a he's got a weird spelling name it's like I've smashed the keyboard, isn't it? It's just like, what's our surname? Bash, 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 bash. There you go. For us British people, um, it's obviously Greek, isn't it? So, yeah, so I'll put it, it in the show notes. But, um, it's all Greek to me. Yeah, thank you again, and uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for having me, and I hope it's been valuable to those who are listening. Thank you for those who have joined us, um, and, yeah, I hope it's been valuable. Brilliant, thank you.